I don't know, Andrew. I I think if would you say you need Oz at the end? You got to walk down the yellow brick road for automation. I would say you don't. You don't have to. You're not going to have to. What I did is I read the Oz principle, which is getting results through individual and organizational accountability. Basically, you could have taken this whole book, you could have crunched it into like 60 pages and called it a day, but no, this guy just wanted to ramble for 300. The first part, I'll say that I love the whole first part. The second and third part, he just kind of keeps going on. Even the reviews go kind of go into, you could take these principles and apply them to literally any book. You, you, you could pick out a thin air and the, also the book which just wasn't prescriptive. Last thing on bashing here uh the the forward is <laughs> victor hugo once said there's one thing stronger than all armies in the world that is an idea who is whose time has come when i first read this first one through the book i was like i was like oh wow that's a great idea i, mean, you know, I, I looked at it the second time I'm like oh my gosh why <laughs> why 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 okay fine that's just whatever wait, right wait is is the author saying that his idea is great because yes. victor H- oh okay. yes Yes, 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 yes. And I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, this guy's just full of like, full of, it. Full of himself. Yeah, yeah, not full of it. He, there were some good principles and good stuff. It was a, the book's almost a great reminder on what accountability is. And mm. first thing I put in was this definition: it's rising above the circumstances and doing whatever it takes to get the results desired. And I, that's why I love this first part. It kind of says, it kind of asks you to look at yourself and say, "All right, what am I?" above the line or below the line. This is this concept he describes as above the line is basically he has four, four steps. It's uh, seeing it, owning it, solving it and doing it. And he later in the book, he describes the characters in the wizard of Oz as kind of these four steps goes into a couple examples, but below the line is essentially doing these things. And oftentimes what I loved about this book is that it's very easy for people who are, uh, operate above the line to fall below the line and there are these kind of traps that you find yourself in below the line and it's ignoring and denying it's it, not my job you point the finger uh, you act confused and then you just say tell me what to do covering your tail and then waiting and sitting so loved all of these because it's something I think everyone can find themselves falling into at times even if you operate quote unquote above the line a majority of the time you can find yourself falling under but falling below the line basically you're doing one of these things um the book wasn't very prescriptive on solving it all it on providing a great solution uh and what i mean by that is of course he has these four steps you know to see it on a solve it do it but he doesn't really talk about the how I guess he throws them out there. Was it not discussing it or was it like the, the thoughts that he put out weren't exactly ones that were, were going to work necessarily and didn't really discuss it. Hmm. It wasn't really, he provided, he put, he put the information out there. It, it felt like he didn't drive it home as best he could have. And maybe that was just part of the writing style, but it didn't feel like there was like a, punch down home solution or it was almost like he just put his thoughts out um so with this being said part one was my favorite part uh kind of gets into getting results through accountability i did put this whole massive blurb that i will just let you guys go through in the show notes that's a wall of um, text oh it totally is i i loved it though honestly it's a complete wall of text uh, there's one line here um, that I did really like, which I probably should have just included the line, but I felt like the whole, the whole you need you need the background, right? You need the background. Um, essentially, it talks about the Wizard of Oz. Uh, the book recounts. Here I go. I'm just gonna read it. The book recounts a journey towards awareness, and from the beginning of their journey, the story's main characters gradually learn that they process they possess the power within themselves to get the results they want. Until the end, they think of themselves as victims of their circumstance, skipping down the yellow brick road to the Emerald City, where they supposedly find the all-powered wizard that grants them wisdom, heart, courage, and the means to succeed. The journey empowers them, and even Dorothy, even Dorothy, who could have clicked her red slippers, 
unaware she's able to use them. Um, so he kind of gets into why people like it. Basically, it's people relate to the theme of the theme in the journey from ignorance to knowledge. Uh, so as you've seen in the Wizard of Oz, right, everyone already has these powers available to them. They just have to look down in themselves to find them. It, it, you know, the wizards behind the curtain, really, it was in you all along to find it. Um, he goes to say here, unfortunately, even the most ardent admirers ardent admirers of the story often fail to learn the simple lesson, never getting off the yellow brick road, blaming others for their circumstances, and waiting for the wizards to wave their magic wands and make all their problems disappear. In fact, the temptation to feel and act like victims has become so popular in American in America that has that it has created a very real crisis. And this is kind of where he goes into the victim cycle. He basically gets into people blame their own problems. People blame others for their own problems. And uh, it says, you know, the majority of people in organizations today, when confronted with poor performance or unsatisfactory results, immediately begin to formulate excuses, rationalizations, or arguments when they cannot be held accountable or at least not fully accountable for their problems. So it's easy, right? You fall below the line, you just blame others. So uh, he gets into the latest, most up-to-date management concepts and techniques won't help if you've neglected the basic principles to empower, empower people and organizations to turn in exceptional performances. Don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Oh boy, I don't know where to start. So the so the first thing that came to mind is um, recently I just read uh, Twelve Rules for Life uh, by Jordan Peterson, yeah. and one of his most famous rules uh, that likes to get lampooned a lot is you know clean up your room. Uh, right. So actually, in the book, it's not clean up your room, but it's set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. There sure. is a lot of, of uh, reference to, you know, you know cleaning rooms, starting small and whatever. He says, uh, perhaps you will then see that if all people did this in their own lives, the world might stop being an evil place. After that, with continued effort, perhaps it could even stop being a tragic place. Who knows what existence might be like if we all decided to strive for the best. And there's there's a lot that I've learned by taking accountability i mean and that's that's a vague overarching term but like totally i realized that i had to lose 30 pounds like in, in order to to maintain healthy right um i had to stop eating like crap and and uh and and get healthy right uh, i had to sleep right and and those are things i i have control over right and what you, you find out, you know, cleaning your room, you know, getting a decent amount of sleep, you know, um, exercising, eating right. These all are not ends in themselves, right? These are habits you start cultivating, right? right? And you start cultivating the discipline that goes along with those habits. And that could branch out into other areas of life, right? Um, similarly, taking accountability and changing the little things, you know, changing the little things in your little sphere of influence, right? Uh, can set a precedent, right? They could encourage others. Uh, you can, you can do a lot by simply taking accountability for what's yours. Um, one of the things in the Wizard of Oz that people get distracted with is they see this, this entire world and everything that's wrong in this world, like the, the evil trees in the forest that are throwing apples at Dorothy. They look at the evil wizards that are, that are attacking them, right? And, and there's a deep innate desire to want to put that all right. But when you, you let go and you say, look, there, there are evil things in the world. There are things that are beyond my control and, uh, I can't, I can't do anything about them. That doesn't mean that I need to give up or ask for it from, from above. Exactly. It means that what I can do, right? What I'm responsible for, I need to take care of, of my stuff. 
because someone else that is someone else's responsibility and if i take care of my stuff and 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 we and someone else sees me taking care of my stuff and they start taking taking care of their stuff everyone starts taking care of their own stuff the guy who's responsible for taking care of that forest the the forest keeper dude or or the the dude who's supposed to oil the tin man or like those things will also get taken care of right i i can't literally be all you know i can't do everything but i can do what i i can be accountable for and where that where that becomes increasingly frustrating is when you do see these things that trickle down to you that need to get fixed that are someone else's problem, right? And, and you say, how can, how can I prevent the source of the problem, right? How, totally. How, what action, what heroic action do I need to take to fix the source of the to problem? Fix the source, right? right? And, and turns out that, your problem is that it rains and you should probably just get an umbrella rather than trying to solve weather. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> like just do your best for your own self, right? Take, take care of your own self, your own things, the people around you stay, t- start taking accountability and responsibility for that. Don't think it's going to be handed to you. Cause I can guarantee you it's not, it's not right. It's not. So don't think don't think the government's going to come out with a mandatory umbrella mandate oh, and yeah. and pass out umbrellas because it rains in the United States. You got to go out and get your own. Uh, but but once you do, I promise you, you are going to be able to focus on the things that really matter, like your your family and your friends and your house, without having to worry about the rain. And I love that the exam the whole thing the example too. Uh, essentially, what we see though what this guy throws out is that people it's people find it easier to blame someone else or something else for their own problems. They don't sit down and evaluate. They would, they'd go out and say, you know, you walk into work, why are you wet? Well, it was raining. It it was raining outside. It was, I didn't know it was going to rain. It was raining. It's raining outside. You don't have an umbrella in your car. You don't have an umbrella with you. uh, And you're going to blame something else for your why you're wet why this is your not your problem when in fact it really is and you're not going to be changing the source of the problem like you you're blaming right. something there's a right. there's a there's a negotiation technique um a, a, a smart a smart negotiator smart car salesman will say is there anything preventing you from buying this car today right and one of the things you can do if if he doesn't ask that question up front to weasel out, you can say, ah, uh, well, you know what? Actually, I I got to run this past the wife or, you know, uh, the bank, you know, closed 30 minutes ago and I would have to ask them for for a different price. So, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have to to pass today. Right. And and you're you're pointing to a nebulous you know organization or, or someone who's unavailable to be to be contacted yeah. or or not a party to this. And you're saying, well. I'm actually not going to take it's not accountability. It's not my right, fault. It's not, not my, my problem. Fault, right. it's, it's someone else's problem. I can't do this thing right now. I would love to, but I can't because of something right. else. That's, that's not taking accountability, right? It's a, it's a sleazy negotiating tactic that works, but it's still sleazy. He has a couple more points in here. I, I'll just cover kind of his solution uh, and then we can kind of wrap it up. But there are a couple other quotes I also like. Those obsessed with the past are ignorant of the future. You know, people who obsess over the past, they they don't have the foresight. They're not mm-hmm. going to, they're just going to keep looking back and saying, it's, it, it is, conti- I've continued to walk into work wet. I have not brought my umbrella. I'm trying to solve the weather right now. I'm trying to solve rain. It's like, just bring an umbrella to work. Um, but he does provide solutions um, in part two. And then, he did a shoddy job in part three. That's why I didn't really include any notes um, th- through others, basically. But part two is seeing it, owning it, solving it, doing it. Seeing it involves recognizing and acknowledging the full reality of the situation. He describes this as the hardest step and the greatest hurdle because it's hard to take an honest self-appraisal and acknowledge that you can do more to get the results you want. And one of the things he kind of harps on in this book is feedback. Constantly get feedback on yourself, the way the way you see the world isn't the same way other people see the world. So he said, go out, get feedback, go out, you know, ask what people think of you, your work, what you're doing, get feedback on it because you have to know what other people are seeing through their lens versus you through yours, uh, owning it, 
is the means to accepting the responsibility for the experiences and realities you create for yourself and others. It, fine. Fine. You, I, I think it could have been wrapped into... They could have been broken down differently, but I'll let it go. Owning it, obviously, you have to own. You take you you, you accountability is fifty percent ownership, right? You have to take ownership. You're not you're never going to become accountable if you don't own it. You can just point something out every day and say, "Oh, well, I don't have to worry about it. you know, don't have to worry about it." Um, so you have to own it, and then solving it kind of entails changing reality by finding and implementing solutions to problems that you may. Or, may or may not have thought of before while avoiding the trap of falling below the line. So this is the one step I think. So you said seeing it is the hardest, but solving it is the one step where you can easily fo- find yourself becoming the victim. Again, just pointing at others, denying, you know, putting your tail between your legs, falling kind of in the trap again, and then doing it entails mustering the commitment and courage to follow through with the solutions you've identified, even if the solutions involve a lot of risk, which I love. Because if you've solved it in a way, it, it I'm not a very, I'm, I'd say I'm pretty risk averse. It's very easy for me to just stay and not, not risk. But uh, I love the last step here is uh, do it even if it involves a lot of risk. So <laughs> just kind yeah. of an interesting piece. But um he says success in business boils down to one simple principle you can either get stuck or get results period case closed there's and i'd agree with him i don't think there's another you get results or you're you're stuck so um part three goes into kind of groups i i didn't like the way he described this um there was one section he talked on but it, it was mostly really about giving and getting good feedback and what that looks like and basically making sure to request it um, as much as possible on everything you do. So I'm going to have to go back and look through that. I didn't think it was, I didn't think there was enough information in that. And I don't think I had enough time to cover it all uh, through this, but if you're going to take away one or two things is don't be the victim uh, of a situation that you can control. Basically you can't point at something else for all of your problems. You have to take ownership and accountability for something that you can do. And um, the above the above and below the line, which is, you know, if you're below the line, you're basically becoming that victim and above it, you're taking those necessary steps to get results. That's what I would say. But that's what I have for the book. It's a it's a weighty subject matter. There's a lot to cover, and there's not not just that, but it's there's. Let's see. Would you say different principles out there? Yes. Yeah, there's there's right. definitely For accountability. Yeah. A mentality that says I just want to be taken care of or I just want to sit and do my job or someone right. else is going to come along right. and right. and and pr- provide totally. me the tools I need to do my job or you can take the stance that I have been provided both by God and management with the tools that I need to do my job and it's up to me to do that job you know take taking that personal responsibility and saying look this may not be the perfect situation right this may not be the way i wanted it to be but i'm gonna try my darndest to to make it work right um and and subsequently to make it better for everyone else around me that is ultimately what you want to keep in mind you want to you want to keep in mind the the fact that you know this is you're not serving anyone by complaining, right? You're not serving anyone not by anything, putting right. the putting putting the blame and shifting the blame on on someone else. I mean, it's you know ignoring and denying, you know, finger pointing, um, covering your tail, right? You're you're just saying, hey, it's it's not my fault. You're not taking responsibility, right? Um, and, and and I see this in a lot of uh, people who who start using the 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 big tech tools. I mean, it's 
I, uh, something, something happened, you know, I, I'm not responsible for this. I, I'm just doing my job, you know, that, that's per the Nuremberg trials, not a defense, but we, we, we as a society recognize that it's, it's time to, to take personal responsibility, right? And especially as we, you know, start forming into these, these communities, right? Communities won't take people who, who are, are, are toxic like this, right? And, and that's what this turns into, right? You, you turn into either a toxic workplace or a toxic friendship. You know, you, you don't want someone who's always blaming you for the things that go wrong in their life, right? That's just not a, a, a healthy way to, to live your life, right? So you got to find some way to turn that around if, if that's the path you're going down. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you see someone else who's going down that path. And, and it's, it's hard. I mean, I'm reading a really good book right now, uh, The Righteous Mind, um, uh, by, by Jonathan Haidt. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to go over it. I'm, I'm hoping to next week, but it's, it's really hard to, to get someone else to, to turn around. It's, it's really hard to, to get someone, like you said, to step back and see, to, to see it. I mean, that's, that's step number one. You got to see, hey, I'm not taking responsibility for my actions. That is a sentence that not a lot of people are willing to, to say or even come to the conclusion to say. Right. Yeah. So, so, I mean, the, the more pressure you can, you can start keeping on someone, right? In, in order to help them, in order to serve them, in order to, to, to make this a better world. I mean, share this show if, if that's what it takes, right? Share that book if that's what it takes, right? Um, we'll be here. We'll be talking about this. We'll be going through it. Grab bag has kind of turned into, you know, moral compass hour. I'm, I'm not against it. I like it. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of soft skills in tech that are, are missing, honestly. And, and, you know, we can get down to the bits and bites, but that's not where the people live. Uh, so, so we're trying to be where the people live and, and we will continue to, to be here with, with every, with every episode. And with that, we hope you enjoyed this episode of our Compose Cast. Thank you. Be safe. And we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye, everybody.